My mum and dad landed to like the, the photos of me walking out the team hotel with just my sunglasses, a bottle of beer and my budgie smugglers. And I met honestly, my old man went off his rocker. <laughs> he said, there's a few things that have annoyed me in life, but that's definitely up there. He said, I don't want to see my son, you know, walking around in a pair of bloody Y fronts on the TV. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Rugby Pass Offload with Max Laif and Ryan Wilson and uh, shortly we'll be joined by true rugby legend in Scotland and Lions star Stuart Hogg. Uh, firstly, Ryan, it's been a hell of a week. You announced you're leaving Glasgow after 13 years and perhaps more importantly, you finally get rid of your creepy child luring man bun. You what? It wasn't creepy. Max. <laughs> Rugby's losing its mind. <laughs> um, I'll be honest, it's fragile. I'm fragile. I'm yeah. fragile because boys, I'm when I got that cut off, a little piece of my soul went away as well. It looks like a bloody wig, boys. I'm absolutely gutted. I, I genuinely, every time I catch myself in a mirror, I just instant regret. Yeah. I I did like it. It was it had a sort of an element of majesty to it. It's now very kind of dropping off the kids at the school vibes. Very dad. I imagine it's like your wife likes this one more, doesn't she? Oh, honestly, she she said, I feel like I've got you back. You've been missing for three years and it feels like you're actually back. Like the kids, my kids are so happy. They're like, Bella, every two minutes she comes and cuddles me. She's like, Daddy, I can't believe it. I just love your new hair. So um, there's been mixed emotions about it. I'm still struggling with it. Raised a bit of money for the charity, so that was all right. Um, but I thought, why not? Just reel back the clock, go all the way back to the beginning and, yeah, regret it. So I think I might try and grow it back again. But uh, oh, Quick one for the charity again, Ryan, just to remind everybody. It was for the Glasgow Children's Hospital charity. So we did a thing for my, well, for my last game. It was uh, Plaster It Purple at Scotston. So they raised a fair bit of cash for them. Um, and you can donate on my Instagram account. Just jump on there and it's in the links in the bio. It was very emotional, boys. I'll tell you, I, Stan, I said, oh, listen, do you want to say a few words before we go out? And I said, mate, keep it short. Because usually 90 seconds, don't you? The captain's yeah. got 90 seconds to speak. And I said, mate, keep it to 30 seconds in case I can't get the words out. And I managed to get the words out because it had been an emotional build up. But as soon as I walked out of the change room, the kids were there. Oh, oh, I was like, oh, no. And then Jackson said to me, Jackson was like really upset the other day. And I said, what's wrong? He said, I just don't want daddy to be sad anymore. Oh, man. Oh, man. Because he saw me get he saw me get upset, but it was more like... Yeah, it was more like... Uh, yeah. Emotional moment with the kids going out. Gratitude. Just gratitude. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's been an emotional an emotional roller coaster. But uh, it was a good game. It was uh, miserable. Absolutely miserable out there. Like hailstones. But it was perfect. For, uh, That's a real Ryan Wilson combative evening, isn't it? Just exactly. suit the weather suit in your style. Beautiful. Exactly. So now it was nice. And then uh, a couple of jars after to celebrate with the yes. boys. And, uh, yeah. From that kind of high that you've described there to unfortunately not such a high for Max. Uh, not such good news down at Ashton Gate on Friday night. Losing your first home prem game since November. Going down 2036 against Sale. I, I have to do these things, Max. I don't love it, but talk us through that Ben Curry try, the singling oh, no. out of Max Laeef. Oh. I just, I did just literally five minutes ago get sent a link by <laughs> one of the boys. I actually shuddered inwardly as I saw his number seven just sort of disappear into the sort of end goal. I was like, oh my God, did that just happen to me? I just was like, this could be fine. This is a just an inside ball. I've got him. I've got him on toast here. I just, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't. He was, he was like a greasy deer. I'd, I'd lost him when he, he just dropped a little bit of a shoulder and I spun off on my, um, off my foot, slipped and um, he was through. So, They're the worst ones, eh? And straight oh, away, mate, no, you, you know what you've done wrong. You're like, I should have gone low. Why, why did I try and grab him? Why didn't I do that? You know, but I love a monster mash tackle. That's my problem. It's like, Mm, I want to get up there and and and, and handle, but um, not this day. I was I was the smaller fish, but yeah, it was it was a um, it was a meaty game. I won't lie, it was a lot of kicking. They kicked well. Gus War, Georgie Ford, tactical masterclass, very well kicked. And then obviously the curry the curry twins were everywhere. They were um, airlifting blokes out of their studs. It was nutty. They were very keen. 
There's nothing worse when someone makes a reel of it as well. Oh, no. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm on. I'm... Yeah. But bye now. Oh, look. You know what oh. I mean? You don't need that. Oh, I don't need that. Let's rugby. get it viral, though. But you don't need it. Oh, it is what it is. It's rugby. Eh? It's just, it'll happen probably. It'll happen again at some point. But, um, yeah, they, 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 they had both had very strong games. And um, I thought John Luke was also quite handy. He, he, he was imposing himself, as he always does. Big Aryan bastard. Um, but yeah, Sale looking yeah. looking um, looking worthy of um, a playoff spot. They're going to be they be a handful for anyone. Max, let's get the inside track on your thoughts on that Ellis Genge tackle uh, when he avoided a red card for a shoulder hit on. That's what on my thoughts Harry's on? Head. It is it is what it is, isn't it? He he bef- he definitely planted his shoulder in his face. But they were at each other all game. Like they were off, off the ball, they were just having a good tete a tete. Like it was, um, it was funny to watch. Just like in breakdowns, just end, trying to end each other. It was quite funny. You could tell it was that kind of England, England banter. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, let's get into each other. We're who's the hardest? I'm the hardest. No, you're harder. No, I'm harder. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's that, that, that kind of currency of those two characters on the field. Well, look, boys, talking about. Reds, controversial Reds, lucky to avoid Reds. What about Ollie Woodman getting sent off in Exeter's 62-19 loss to uh, Leicester Tigers? Here's my issue, right? Mm. There's absolutely no need to go looking for it. Like, it, it, he's in touch. It's done. It, it's not a it, like, it, take it away because it's everyone's like, it's a ridiculous red card. That's It makes it sound ridiculous because right? it's a red card. It's not. It's a yellow card. Yellow card. It's With a top of yellow card, which is unfortunate. But... Why even bother going looking for it? That's where I think common sense comes in. You're like, Hoggy's covered well, taking Ashton into touch, his boots in touch, done. Actually, if you look at it, Woodburn slides before he gets there. Exactly the same thing happened in your game. Tua Lange comes in and bangs mate in the head. He should have got a... Yeah, he smoked Harry Thacker in the shred. Yeah. So again, it's the inconsistencies, but... Why even bother go looking for it? It's like, it's done. Even TMO was going, oh, I'm not sure it's affected it. But he's oh. like, oh, I'm going to make a point here. No, I'm 100% on, in that camp. But be careful. We could be pulled aside by the long arm of the law. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. So then let's talk about that. So then Jack Noel puts this tweet out. And he's getting he's getting in trouble for, for tweeting. By who? The RFU? He's been charged by the R- RFU for criticising the referee decision. Cue no. my jingle, cue my jingle. Rugby's losing its mind. Rugby's losing its mind. <laughs> but yeah, does that mean they're going to just scour the twi- the Twitter scape for other rugby players and just pull them up, hung, drawn, cord in the in the in the village square before we... the masses? Let's test it out now. Let's just both <laughs> put out a tweet about it. Let's both put out a tweet about it and see what happens. Nah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're, we're Actually, allowed basting it on air anyway. Hopefully they don't. Yeah, listen. true. We're, we're getting enough trouble. Here he is. Can you do me a favour? Can you get your long hair back, please? I prefer. <sighs> yeah, see, all the geese, all the geese is like your long hair. I I concur with you, Hoggy. Yeah, it it, it just yeah. majestic, wasn't it? Now he just oh. looks like a dad. You're like a peon. He is a dad. He's like he's like <laughs> super dad Mark Five with so You're many kids. Looking like a dad, by the way, but you just looked cooler. You looked more like an action hero. You were the the protagonist. Yeah, you look, you look, yeah, you look, you look cool. Oh yeah, no, look don't cool. hoggy, mate. I'm absolutely gutted. I feel like yeah, you, look, you look like a little you look like a little boy again, mate. This, <laughs> this is, is what you remember. This is what you remember from Glasgow, eh? Yeah, because you're a lunatic back then as well. Okay, be honest. What was Ryan like at Glasgow? A pain in the arse, massive pain in the arse. Um, that to be fair, his quality he used to always, and he's always done this to be fair. He used to always look after the Islander boys that came in. Um, it was Bezos with um Nix and Nax, and then um he looked after another few of the Fijian boys after I left. But my his quality, Wilson was always for like. You know, obviously having um, Ava Young. What were you when you had Ava? 23? 22, I think. Yeah, 22. So a uh, massive part of Wilson's career has been all about the family. So it was, um, he was always driving the family things around the club. And then 
when his dad came into coach in 2017 and he was, he was named captain. Um, he, he done everything he possibly could to be the, the father figure around the team. Um, yeah, him and him and his him and his brother Cully, and their dad Renz, um, run Glasgow Warriors for a couple of years, didn't you? Yeah, too right we did. Oggy, did you do the extra initiation? I had no comment. <laughs> no one gives that one. It's the only one. I love. I like it. that. I love it. Grounded in so much ominous mystery, I love if, it. If, if you if you ever mention that outside, mate, I get my get my balls chewed off, and we'd, yes, and we'd get. Oh, that's um, I'm getting a lot of trouble, yeah. yeah I've got a lot of yeah, time. That, that's that's going to remain in house. We've had so many extra boys, and we've tried it with every win, single yeah. one, and no one yeah. has given us anything. It's a lot of fun. Put it that way. It's a lot of fun, um, and you have a bloody sore head in the morning as well. So, uh, yeah, I managed to escape it for three years actually, but yeah, it's worth the wait. Oh. Um, Highly oh, Quick word on the on that game uh, at the weekend. Are you, are you still seething with your other boys about the uh, decision to send Ollie Woodburn off? Oh, we actually talk rugby on here, do we? Oh, oh, yeah, well, mildly, just sort of... Listen, Jack Knoll's in a lot of trouble at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, I don't... I here don't it know is. Is what it is, is it? <laughs> you see, that's what I'm talking about, right? That's how they silence the people. That's how they do it. Uh, I thought we lived in I'll a I'll tell you what, the, uh, it was... If you look at the clip, right, there's... um. First and foremost, what about my tackle? I made a tackle. Would you believe it, Wills? A little bit more uh, leg drive and Al Woodburn wouldn't have to bloody come in here. But it was good. You well, that's... <laughs> I said, mate, come on! I, I I got him down. All right, that's just that. That's just yeah. that. Yeah. You know, I thought when you're when you're well for draws, you know, the touchline to the to the uh, to the front row of the crowd is very very close. I didn't want to put Ashton, you know, in the front row of the stand. So, um, but anyway, I'm standing. There's a, an angle uh, uh, on the TV, and you could see Carl Dixon speaking to the referee, and I'm in the background having a little drink, but like almost like within hearing distance. I'm trying to listen to what's going on. And he said, like, something like, yeah, the initial tackle puts Ashton into touch. And then he said, I want to look at the actions of, of um, White 11. And I went, you're kidding me, and just, like, walked away. Like, in my head, going, like, what's going on? You could see your face. Um, I could see it. Max said, it's absolute bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <we've... laughs> Trying to walk the fence. Like, I can say that. I can say that. But... Genuinely, absolutely like ridiculous. The fact that one, the job's done. You put him into touch. And so why go looking for it? That's what annoyed me about the referee. Why even go looking for it? You don't have to answer, it's fine. But why go looking for it? Just nod your head if you agree. And then secondly, Woodburn's hit the floor first and slid under. It's not like it's like it's hit me. It's hit me. Would he hit me? So um... yeah. Crazy, but what did Chris Ashton say to you when you picked him up after you smashed him into tux? After I absolutely melted him into touch, um, he said something in your ear. That was like, we were like, I was actually, we were actually having a little laugh. I went, Tell me you've not scored that. I was like, <laughs> Tell me you've not scored that. And he's like, I think I have, I think I have. And I was like, Oh, fuck, no way. Um, and then I think it was Dad Kelly came over my shoulder. I was like, Just let him score, just let him score. <laughs> I was like, I was like, Mate, like. Yes, I'd, I appreciate he's going for a record. He's going for 100 tries of that, but I'm not just going to let him walk in the corner. We were still in the bloody game at that point. It was only, what was it, 22-12 when he goes in to score that. I ain't letting him score. I was like, I've just made a tackle here for the first time this season. Let me off. Um, and Matty Scott was laughing about me as well. And then he was like, honestly, I was like, tell me you've not scored that. And he was like, I actually think I have. And I was like, yeah, I'm useless. <laughs> and did you sense the hostility, by the way, when Matt Scott went over and Ashton was looking for his third and he, he, he Ashton was just behind Matty Scott and wanted the ball off him? And you can tell Matt is just that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I watched that back yesterday. Um, and I was like, if he was going for a, if that was for a hundred, I'd be like, right, maybe Matty Scott could give it to him. Um, but didn't he have his hundred by that point and he's just literally going for a hat trick? Yeah, yeah so I think that's good crack. Keeping, I think that's good crack keeping it off him because he's already got the hundred. He doesn't need a hat trick to go with it. You would even dummied him, wouldn't you? Know you? I mean? 
<laughs> I got done big time in the first half, right? I gave away a penalty in the first half, like right, like in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, and I try to like argue my point back with Kyle Dixon, which when you look at the law book, I was technically right. Anyway, that's another matter. Um, but all the Leicester fans are like giving me jip at the at the side. So I've gone up like that, just like come on, keep coming, keep coming. Right? To which then it's like a be- like they've got riled up. Second half, I knock the ball on pretty much right in front of them. And then they're all standing going, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, oh, you bastards. And I'm like, yeah, fair play. Well done, well done. And then I'll give me a big round of applause of that afterwards. I was like, that's good crack. Good crack, that. Let's run through uh, Hoggy's amazing career. Take us through like your first memories of, of a young teenage Stuart Hogg coming into that Glasgow side. Hoggy was just this hasty little freckly man from Hoyk. Um, Which you had no idea where that was. No, of course I did. Scottish from and through, mate. And I, um, but I, I do remember that, do you know, one of my, my memories from you is that Scott and A game where you did the length of the field. Yeah, that's my first. Did you, were you in camp that, that time? And that Six Nations camp? 2012? No. no. So I went in the week earlier and we were playing against England and I wasn't involved, obviously. Um, yeah, Robbo was like, yeah, you can go and play for the A's. I remember Chick Chalmers was the backs coach. He's like, oh, Hoggy, I've only only got a couple of set piece of plays for you. And I turned up at the Cadrono Hotel and there was 42 A4 sheets of paper with different set piece plays in it. I was like, mate, where have you plucked these from? Like, And we run about three of them in the game. I remember Dunk's got man of the match that day, didn't he? Yeah, me, he Dunky. Did, yeah. But we had a good group back then, didn't we, Oggy? We had a bloody good group of... Um, and we of... did. Cause I remember both our first seasons, we finished second bottom after being in the playoffs the year before. Then we arrived, we finished second and bottom. And then the boys went to the 2011 World Cup and then all us younger boys got a shot. And we started building up the Glasgow um, to what it was. I remember for years we had, we had a, very, a very similar 15 or 23. And we, uh, we started to build up a, a good team that ended up being pretty much a Scotland team that went to the 15 and 19 World Cups. Remember, we had some like 20, 28 players at the World Cup in 2015. Yeah. Um, and we won the league that year. So, yeah, no, it was a, it was a class group. Oh, mate, we had a, we had a, we had a class team. Yeah, just great blood. fun. Great fun. Um, well, Hoggy's not, ch- not changed since then. He was he literally came in under Sean Lamont's wing. Absolute legend. The yeah, Sean, Sean won, came. It? Yeah, Sean took me under his wing and said, Look, I'll try and help you out because I'd. Mate, I was. I think I played my first cap at like eighty-two kilos. Um, uh, we need to put some put some bulk in you. So Sean took me under his wing in the gym, and I ended up like squatting like two twenty. By the time Sean left, I think that's why I'm absolutely buggered now. By the way, yeah, can't, yeah. can't can't do a can't do a can't do a body weight squat now, bank. It's because Sean wrecked my knees. But um, no, nah, Sean was quality. I used to always call him a rugby daddy. He just looked after me all the time. Sean Lamont took him under his wing, but then ended up being Hoggy's roommate as well. And if you if you wanted to go with a safe person to room with, it wasn't Sean Lamont because he was worse than me, like trying to play practical jokes, wasn't he? Do you remember like Treviso when I used to phone your hotel room and you thought it was haunted? No, that, that was the night before we played Italy <laughs> in Rome, mate. So Sean had like the, the, the switches next to his bed and like Wilson was right next to us, but like Sean would put the lights off and I'd like, I could tell he was up and moving around, and he was like, go at the bottom of the bed, and I'd switch the light on. And he was like, literally, like, fat, like crawling onto my bed, and you've obviously seen Sean the Monts. Um, he's got third three leg. legs. His third leg when he was when he was like walking around naked. I was I got a fright at that thing, but then, Will started like, hearing all like I was like screaming like a little little girl, and I was like, right, I'm sipping with the light on, and Sean's like, get the light off. Puts the light up. The next thing he's like done it really, really quietly, and like man, I'm like lying facing the 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 window. He's got to that side of the bed and just like like blew in my face, and I have absolutely crapped myself. Switched the light on. His like face is like here. I'm like nah, no chance. Like and like like shaking like mad now. Wilson's next door. Here's all the palaver that's going on. Starts ringing our door, uh, ringing our um phone. And you remember what was it off? Was it? Tiptoe through the window, 
What was that from again? Oh, it was like, uh, is that Slender Man? No. No, oh, is it in Inception? Insidious. 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 Yeah. By the way, so what else is just like? Oh, the tulips. Through the window. And I'm like, nah, like, what's going on here? Because I was like, it didn't sound like Welsh at all. And I'm like, right, pick the phone up. I'm like, now nah, what the hell's going on here? And Sean's like, Sean starts to play along. It's like, Hoggy, I'm not touching the lights here like, now, by the way. Like, it's it's gone. Like, how can I be doing this? Lo and behold, I didn't know the lights were up that side of the bed at this point. Um, But he's like flickering all the lights on and off and then like putting like random lights on over here and over there. And then Wilson's still ringing through and then it's like banging on the... um. You could like get from your balcony onto our balcony and you're like knocking on the windows, and then jumping back and that. And I was this is a night before an international test match, and I'm going, I ain't sleeping. I'm literally sitting morning. like I am. Mate, I'm literally sitting like I am right now. Going, I've got a game to play tomorrow, and I like I can't sleep because I'm fucking shitting myself because this lot of wound me up about the hotel being haunted. It the wasn't. Best thing was he was so OCD that he'd want to be in bed by like nine o'clock in his bed, like nine all his nine socks 30. and pants all in the drawer, like everything in the. He'd unpack on away trips. You'd be like, "Mate, we're here for one night. What are you doing?" He'd have like all his socks and that, all his cup of tea, yeah, his you supplements. To. You have to hey, fail to prepare, prepare to fail, and all that. You know what I mean? Ridiculous. I was I was really bad for a while. I was really bad for a while with that. Oh, you take us through your um that. Your full debut in Cardiff in the Six Nations, you replaced Max Evans after, I think, just over a quarter of an hour. What were your yeah. memories of that? I remember it was Dunkey Weir and I were on the bench for the first time. I remember Big Al Kellogg um, standing with us, singing the anthem with us. And as we were walking off, it was like, Hoggy, just... Because I'd never... Like, it was weird, because I'd obviously never been involved in international stuff before, and it was like... I was, like, looking around going, what the hell is going on here, like... Millennium Stadium is massive. Uh, Big Al kind of puts his arm in me. He's like, Hoggy, uh, let's just remember to try and stay in the game, will you? Try and stay focused and see, you know, what Rory's doing here, would you do the exact same type thing? I was, before I even like thought about it, mate, I was like warming up in the bottom end and I was like shouted to hurry up and get back, get onto the pitch. Um, Yeah, it was like 15 minutes straight on. I was like, didn't have any time to think about what it was. And I think that's why it was, I actually went all right because it was just like bang, hoggy, you're on straight away, go for it. Um, I think like one of the first things I had to do was catch a high ball for East Priestland. I was like, cheesy peeps. I caught it and I was like, right, we're into the game now. And then I run and I squaffed this kick, honestly. I've never, like, it was like a propeller plane, just the, the ball revs, like spun about a million times straight to George North. And I was like, oh shit, so I'm going to have to try and tackle this big Jeronki now, am I? Um, I think, thankfully, like, I think it was Sean at the time came across and helped me tackle him. I was like, right, brilliant. Now we're definitely in the game. Um, and then before I knew it, it was done. Like, genuine. Like, half time, came back out, done. Uh, should have scored. Roman Poit didn't allow it. I've got a history of dropping the ball as I get to a trial, but genuinely, this time I managed to keep a hold of it. Um, didn't even go to the TMO. And, uh, yeah, she'd had, she'd had a try, but um, managed to... Being, being from Hoyk and Wilson will tell you what Hoyk people are like, I managed to steal the match ball um, and get it signed by the players and it sits down in the, uh, I think it's in the spare bedroom at the minute. Um, yeah, remember we used to play, Wilson might remember this, Max, you'll definitely remember this. Do you remember playing with the Webb Ellis balls? Yeah. Back in yeah. the day? Yeah. yeah. And so it's a red and white, we it's a red and white Webb Ellis Welsh yeah. ball. Um, and the players from the 22 signed it that day and, yeah, managed to keep it. I think Nick DeLuca actually stole it and gave it to me and I just walked off the pitch where right? like Close. pretty cool. Loved it. Yeah. And then straight into your initiation. <laughs> yeah, that that was when it was fun because I don't we've not don't normally do this now, but you had to do a drink with every team member. And it's like a drink of their choice and you have to chop it. I remember Sean was the first drink, literally standing outside the function at the hotel with my mum and dad. Um and Sean the monk comes across with a double whiskey and I'm going. And he just like cheers me and down and says, I'm like, oh, fucking hell. Like, never had whiskey before. Bang. And I was like, whoa, put hairs on the chest. And I was 19, didn't even have bloody chest hair. Um, and then it, re it, it went from red wine to white wine um, to little Sambuca shots, tequila shots. Greg Laidlaw done me a solid. He got me uh, a gin and tonic, which was just a, was just a water. So he he's he helped me out a little bit. But Big Jim comes across and gives me a pint. 
And that was like the worst drink of the night. Because as soon as I had the pint, the cookie cup was sitting right next to me and the cookie cup got chundered into it in the function room. Oh. Uh, and I was like, it got chundered into it and then hoyed out the fucking fire exit. Um, I had to sing on stage that night. My parents were at the back of the room. They didn't expect me to sing a song like I did. I sang I'm a Believer. Oh, which no, I thought, song. No, but my mum and dad thought that was going to be the case. They were like, oh, we were expecting something like that. But, um, and after it, people asked me what song did I sing. I was like, oh, I sang I'm a Believer off a of Shrek. Like, obviously, I thought it was off a of Shrek, but lo and behold, it's from the Monkeys about 40 years earlier than that. Um, but yeah, no, it was a class night. I remember Fordy and Steve Much, the physio, put me to bed. Uh, and then I think I came back down and then my mum and dad put me to bed and my mum like rolled up loads of towels <laughs> around the bed so I didn't roll out. But I woke up in the morning um, and I had like a massive nose. I had like a cut across my nose and I, I'd split my head open. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? My mum said I went to be sick in the toilet slept on the on the bathroom floor and headbutted the toilet and burst my nose, split my nose open and split my head open. I was like woke up in the morning, I was like, fuck, I've been in a proper proper fight in the game or something like that. Lo and behold, I'd headbutted the toilet because I couldn't handle my piss. Uh, Eleven years ago, they they were the days, eh? They were the days. Oh man. Talk us through the twenty thirteen Lions tour to Australia. Just initially getting picked, you were the youngest player in the squad at only 20. What did it feel like getting that call up? Oh, mate, it was unbelievable because, like, prior to it, we came off the back of a decent Six Nations. We, we finished third. Um, and I played all right. The kind of first time you got media attention, you're like, oh, the people are saying, no, you might, you might get there. You, like, your, your name's, um, you know, there or thereabouts. I was like, well, Lee Happen has just come off the back of getting Six Nations Player of the Year, so... You know, he's going to be the fullback. And then Rob Carney was there as well. But I remember we were training on the back pitches um, at Glasgow. And I had, I had like hair gel in at the time. And Tatsy, our defence coach, Matty Taylor, was like, oh, mate, you think you're going? You think you're going, don't you? I was like, how do you mean? He's like, you got your bloody hair gel, haven't you? You little ripper. And I was like, fuck it out. <laughs> run inside, run inside, grab my phone, and then like run back outside. Because so I was doing a kicking session with Mossy. And I had like my phone stuck it on Sky Sports News, and then my, my name was read out. I was like, oh, that was, there's like screamed on the back pitches. Um, and like two minutes later, like Gregor comes out and said, Ah, had a feeling you'd be there, Stuart. Had a feeling you'd be there. And then I spoke to Rob Howley that night, and Rob Howley had told me that Gregor said that I could play 10 and goal kick. So I remember, so Gregor knew I was going, but he's like, oh, I just had a feeling you'd be there. So I ended up coming off the bench that weekend. I remember me, Scux, and um, I can't remember who else came off the bench and I had to goal kick and the first place I ever had to goal kick was at Connor away oh mate played, nothing worse at the dog mate, track dog track yeah. mate you played you played, you played at the sports ground mate it's like it's the windiest thing you'll, the windiest place you'll ever come across if you get your kick right you've got a chance if you get it any bit wrong mate it's going close to the touchline and my first kick was outside like, on like the five metre line and I hit it an absolute beauty and it went over and then I had an easy kick after that um I was like, oh, this goal kicking's, this goal kicking's, it's not that difficult. And then that week we ended up playing Le Leinster in the semi final the following week. And a goal kicked then. And I kicked like the first five kicks, like relatively tough ones. I was like, why is this, you know, why does Dunkey Weir and Jack, why are they taking so much time and pressure about these goal kicks? Came with the biggest kick of the match to draw the game to take it in the extra time. I have squaffed it, shanked it, gone AWOL. We get beat. <laughs> I was like, yeah, maybe maybe goal kicking's not for me. Went on that tour, played 10 against combined counties, which we won 70-odd points. Um, and Lee Halfpenny came off the bench at half time, And the first thing I said to him was, you can goal kick. Because like, we were winning by 40-odd points. But I was like, if this could potentially be 100 points, but I've missed a couple of goals. It could be 100 points. I don't want to be the one that lets us down for 100 points. And I think we end up, it was like only end up being like 70 odd anyway. But, um, and then I played 10 against the Brumbies, hit the post twice, and it was only game on tour we lost. It was the best part of six, seven years before I was allowed to play 10 and goal kick again. Do you remember Johnny Sexton scrapping with Hibbard? 
No. When? Where? On that tour? Yeah. Before the last test. Do you know why I don't remember that? Because we were in Noosa um, for the last week. We went on the Sunday after the second test. We lost the second test. And then went for three days on the piss in Noosa prior to the third test. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? I was like, fair enough if it was 2-0. But it was one all. And we all went on the smash for three days in Noosa. Rory Best said to one of the journalists, Irish journalists, was like, what did you learn from the Lions tour? And I think Best replied, well, you can train with a hangover. Um, Because, I mean, honestly, we were... Because we, we were in the... um the mixed veg or the, the binges, whatever you want to call it. Um, dirt trackers. The, the dirt trackers, mate. Like, we, oh, I think we were doing everything we possibly could to wreck the sessions. Um, but then we absolutely blitzed Australia in the final test. So, yeah, going to New South for three days on the piss was probably the best thing we've ever done. Mate, we were celebrating as if we had a, had a part to play. We were just, we were there making up the numbers for the last three weeks, but no, we still had a lot of fun. Good fun. It is crazy to think you were only 20 years old. Like, you look back at some of those videos yeah. you see now, back at that tour, and how young you look. 20 years old. You must have been in awe of, like, everyone I around you. I, I, had, um, I had my 21st on tour. So I remember, I'm, like, yeah, I remember I got a big, big birthday cake and I had to sing on the bus, and then I got, because I was the youngest and I'd fucked up a few times losing that bloody teddy bear. Um, I had to do a fair amount of drinks there, but. Mate, it's the same as when he first went to Glasgow. You're like, you know, all of the people that are there. Mate, I played, I played with my hero and Brian O'Driscoll in a, in a game, like, training with them all the time. I was like, what is this little pasty little freckly Scotsman doing here with all these legends? Like, but I was like, this is quality, absolute quality. It's like, mate, I was offering like tie boy shoelaces and everything for them. I was like, what am I doing here? Like, I cleaned your boots. <laughs> like, what do you want? <laughs> so after you won this year, how long did it go on for? And then who stayed out there the longest year? I think we all came back on like. The Tuesday or something, my parents flew back on the Sunday after um after the third test. And do you remember the video of me walk and the photos of me walking out the um the team hotel with just my sunglasses, a bottle of beer, and my budgie smugglers. And I la- and my mum and dad landed to like the the photos of that. And I mate, honestly, my old man went off his rocker at me. He's like, that is not a good look for you at all. He <laughs> the hog name. <laughs> he was like, he was like, he said, you know, I've, there's a few things that have annoyed me in life, but that's definitely up there. He said, I don't want to see my son, you know, walking around in a pair of bloody Y fronts on the TV and all that kind of stuff. But um, was that the best tour for you? I mean, you you toured three times with the Lions, which is kind of insane in itself. But for you, what was your favorite? Um, that was the best Lions tour, tour on yeah. Um, one of the best tours. Uh, well, did you do that massive tour in 2014 when we went America, Canada, Argentina, South Africa? Nah, I'd wreck my shoulder against in that. I wrecked my shoulder against South Africa when you were. I think you were at that Lions tour, and I was in South Africa, just kept my shoulder, so I was out for ages with that. Oh yeah, that was a good tour. Um, because we had well four di- four different countries in four weeks. It was manic, but. I remember um, and the build up to because we had gone out on tour. You go out for like a a midweek meal, um, in like small groups and like every now and then you'd have like a couple of beers or whatever. Um, but I remember going into the uh the last test against South Africa and like we we're all like pretty much checked out at this point because we're absolutely knackered at the end of the season. I remember we, we all went out to a restaurant, um on like the Wednesday night, I think it was before our day off. And Big Verm was like, right lads, you know, I've 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 caught wind of a few boys having a few beers and that during the midweek, you know, like we've got away with the last three games because we've played, you know, lesser opposition. Um we're now playing against South Africa. You'll not see these boys, you know, going out midweek and getting smashed. You'll you'll not see that at all. But you got off the bus to go into the into the um restaurant and I reckon six of them are on their hands and knees spewing their ringer outside the restaurant. Remember, uh, was it Andrew Strauss, the hooker with the long blonde hair that was the captain at the time? Yeah, mate, he's chundering fucking left, right, in Chelsea, yeah, like, Adrian and Strauss. we're going, and and we're going, yeah, these boys will not be out in the piss at all, mate. I, the whole squad were there; they just left as we were going in. Um, <laughs> they're all absolutely steamboat willied. I think I think that actually took sixty points off our stat weekend as well. 
we've had some good ones. Like even, you know, again, careful how where we go with this, but even Japan 2019, you you get a bit of time to go and relax. And we had some good nights out in Japan as well. Like <laughs> we've had a few good ones, haven't we? We've had a few. We, have, well, we, could, we, could, we could go on for days, but unfortunately in the top left of my screen, it says recording. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, let's just say we've kicked the arse out of it. We've kicked the arse out of it and I wouldn't change it. One of the best nights out with Wilson was, um, well, for me, the fortunate thing for me being shite at drinking was when Wilson was Batman, I was Robin. <laughs> oh, no, don't bring this up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> No, man, like, oh, yeah. they asked me to do a little bit of About You the other day at Glasgow. And they were like, um, well, can you come in and talk about your career? Like, and tell us. And you, when you Google my name, that's like one of the first things that comes up. <laughs> 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 oh, the, the minion in the red career. <laughs> Remember that. It's some Remember, yeah, Remember Nico? That the, uh... I, I will tell them I was the crayon. <laughs> There you go, you got I just, the grey on. Do you not like pick a partner or something? And like if nobody wanted to go with you. Nobody because they knew you from a pre- previous couple of years, like nobody's going with Wills at all. And I think you just pretty much grabbed me and went, Right, you're with me. And I was like, I ain't really got a fucking choice here now, have I? And then because I was drinking with you the whole night, mate, I was absolutely blutered and sent home. And then we oh, up in the morning. I was like, "Oh yeah, oh shit, spandex, oh, spandex." It wasn't even like the muscly one. It was like a. I look like uh, I look like a bloody Rodney from Only Fools and Horses. You know the spandex. Right. It was. Uh... <laughs> and he was Robin. I, the first thing I remember after the court session was we went through the the main bar, and like boys had like put tables like three or four tables together, and we're just sitting like chewing the fat. The next thing, Wells takes this runner from fucking nowhere, does a Klingsman right across the three tables, wipes every single glass possible on the table, makes the biggest mess you've ever seen, and then just runs out. <laughs> just runs away. And we all got we all got punted out because of it. My, honestly, there must have been like 30 oh. pint pots or whatever gone, like the biggest mess. I think they closed the pub just after that. Wilson just takes off, runs, uh, and the rest of the guys get punted I've, out. I've, grown up. I've got a dad haircut now, boys. I've grown up. God. Yeah, you see, you've grown up, mate. I was out with you after the Italian game, you cowboy. Because <laughs> Ryan was on being like, don't talk about like, guys. I was on, I wasn't out with anyone, wasn't out. And then Sam Negri's on. The first thing he says yeah. is like, hey, it was great to see you on the lash the other day. Amazing. Out of the bus. That's incredible. That is incredible. <laughs> we got to get th- through a couple of things as well. After that lines, the initial line story we talked about, news comes out that you potentially wanted to move to Ulster and then you end up being punished by being dropped from the Pro 12 final later that season against Leinster. Like, take us through kind of what happened. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all my all my dad's side of the family are from Northern Ireland. Um, I remember uh, my agent at the time was like, oh yeah, if we go to Ulster, we can get X, Y, and Z. And that was like night and day compared to what was on. And I was like, yeah, look, let's go for it. It was like the first time I ever I had an opportunity to move. And I was like, oh, this will be quite cool. Um, Went across on the Wednesday. I was named on the Tuesday to play for Glasgow on a Friday night. And funnily enough, it was against Ulster. And on the Wednesday, I was across in Belfast. Um, You know, trying. I was speaking to Mark Hanscom, trying to sign a deal that would take me across to Ulster. Um, anyway, literally at the airport on the way back, Gregor texted me saying, my office, 8 o'clock in the morning. I was like, oh, shit, what have I done? I knew exactly what I'd done. I was in bloody Belfast airport. Um, I played 100 minutes of rugby between the end of the Six Nations and the end of the season. We beat um, Treviso like, quite convincingly. The week after, we played against Zebra. I scored two tries in like, the first 10 minutes. Went to score my hat trick, run the length of the field, done a chip and chase, kicked it on, and I'm running up the right hand side touchline. Jenny just literally ready to dive in the ball to score. And I see Nico coming from the other fucking touchline, rapid, as if he's going to steal the try. So I've looked at him and went, nah, get to it. I'm having this. This is my hat trick. They're arguing sprinting as they're running. <laughs> yeah, sprinting his tail. He's, he, he, he's like, I mean, I understand. And I was like, get away. Running away, and then he, anyway, dies on the ball. We both 
go to do it, almost knock it out of each other's hand. He scores it, slides into the advertising boards, and I just get up and start walking away. And Nico's like stuck under the advertising boards and all that. This was like literally like two or three minutes before half time. Um, Gregor walks in. The first thing he says, like we're like thirty odd points up at this point. First thing Gregor says, well, you didn't celebrate your teammates. That's you off. Never played again for the rest of the season. He was. I was like, off. Oh, I was livid, mate. Absolutely livid. Was that after the whole Ulster thing as well? Yeah. So that was the Ulster thing. I never got to play. And then we played Munster at home in the semi-final. Wasn't involved. Um, won. And then went to the final. And you and I sat in the stand at the RDS together. Um, pint in hand, wasn't it? Yeah, we were drinking pints again. I remember um, there was like a tweet came out after it because we got beat in the final. And like we walked onto the pitch, eh? And there was like a photo of me and you walking on with a pint of Guinness. And it was like, Stuart Hogg and Ryan Wilson have walked onto the pitch 80 minutes too late or something like that. Um, but yeah, like I remember sitting watching that final. It was Brian O'Driscoll's last game. Um, and we got pumped in the final. Um, and I remember going like, no, nah, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to be at this club anymore. I'm done. But then the Alster thing all went tits up. And then the next preseason, I was back. <laughs> well, thank God you did. Yeah. Cause we, we ended up winning the league that year. Yeah, we did. Um, and I stayed at Glasgow for another five years after that. So I signed another two or three contracts after that. So yeah, I was the making of the man. We've all made mistakes. I was young. <laughs> blame my agent. Yeah, blame, always blame the agent. Do you have good memories of the open top bus parade? Oh, here we go. They always joke well, on here that we had a bus parade, open top bus parade. But we, like a few boys went down there, didn't they? There's a couple hundred people, but... I think we all just went. Oh, yeah. Did, oh yeah, where was it? Where was it again? George Square. Yeah. Was it George Square. Yeah. Yeah. There's like one man and his dog down there. I think there's more. I think there's more people in the bus, weren't there? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. We. I think oh. we're all pissed off by then. Let's roll on. Oh yeah, after that that injury we discussed on the 2017 Lions tour, like you're then injured and in and out of rugby, and then you start getting in like some altercations with some abusive fans on social media. Like we talked about these sort of things with Ryan as well and Max and, you know, but how hard did you find being like in the spotlight and attacked on social media and a target, if you will? I think it was after that injury, like I'd maintained a shoulder niggle for like the best part of nine months to go on that tour. I remember coming back, I smashed my eye socket. I came back, had my shoulder reconstructed. I played three games of rugby when I got back. I was out for four months, came back, Played three games of rugby, ripped my iliosaurus muscle and my gut. Was out for three months with that, came back, popped my right shoulder. And like that was when all the kind of stuff started. Like all my injuries happened all at the kind of the one season. And then I was getting like abuse all the time saying, oh, he's never going to be back to where he was and all that kind of thing. And I was like, that was the first time I'd really got like abuse because I'd came off the back of like Six Nations Player of the Year back to back. And then everything was fine and dandy. And then that was about the only time or the first time I started getting abuse. And I was like, nah, like stuff this, like I'm gonna prove you wrong. Ended up like making double the mistakes. Um, and then I was really bad at that age for like biting back at people on online, um, which is a recipe for disaster because all they do is wind you up a little bit more about it. But I mean, it took me a while. It took me a couple of years first and foremost to get over that tour, then to get over the injuries, and then to get over like the initial social media abuse. Um, whereas now, like I look back on it and gone. I can't change it all, but would I handled it a little bit different? Yes, I probably would. I've not had my Twitter for three years. As soon as, as, soon as I was given the Scotland captaincy, I, I was one of the Gregor's agreements was that I came off social media <laughs> or like handed it. So I, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll delete it, Gregor. I'll delete it. I'll be fine. Um, and my agency were like, yeah, no, you, can, you can't delete it. We'll run it for you. So they've run my Twitter for the last three years. Um, and it's actually been quite refreshing. But when you don't read it on Twitter, you still get shared loads of it on Instagram. Um, and I'm at a stage now that I've taken all my message requests and all that off because it was just getting too much. Like I was getting like so much shit the whole time. It got to the point that because people couldn't message me, they started messaging my wife. And like, oh, fuck, you know, giving, giving like shit out to her about me and all that kind of stuff and saying that like she can't be proud of, of her husband and all that kind of stuff and like the kids must be embarrassed and all that. And I was like, Jeez, and I was like, right, Jill, like, you get all your message requests to shit as well. Like, um, 
But that is weird because on the flip side of that, like I want to use my profile in the best way possible. The the worst thing for the social media abuse is that you take like for me now on, on Twitter, like I was good for interacting with people. Like I enjoyed the chat and the banter and stuff like that, but then just got all too much that I was like, well, the people that abuse me have almost ruined it for the people that have, have been, you know, kind to me. Um, I don't miss Twitter. But on Instagram it's the same, like at the end of the day, like people think because we're sportsmen, we've just got this hierarchy that well, we we've got everything that we want and, and life's playing like a piece of piss and we've got the dream job or whatever. Um they completely forget that we're judged on eighty minutes of our week. Eighty minutes of our week. Whereas the rest of the week we're a normal human being that has to, to be a husband, to be a to be a dad, like all these little bits and pieces. We're normal human beings. But people think that we're entitled wankers that need to get abused all the time. You know, I'm obviously wired up different. I know I was mine my hate mail probably wasn't mine wasn't as bad as yours, I guess, but I actually quite enjoy reading them for some reason. It it makes me laugh. You love yeah, this. Yeah, like, I, yeah, but the thing like thing for me, like I like like I'm not exactly somebody that ha- that hides away from shit. Like I've had my hair done, I've had my teeth done, like all that all that different bits and pieces. Like I don't mind um like for years I was just abused on my rugby. Now I just get abused on my parents. Like nothing comes from a rugby point of view. Yeah. And I'm just like, what the heck? Like I and I put a thing out, I think it was the autumn. I was like, judge me on my performance. Like judge my rugby one hundred percent. Like I can take that because I can always get better at that or whatever. But don't judge somebody's appearance because that's personal. No, like I'm doing everything I possibly can. I'm I'm doing everything I can to, to be in a position to make myself feel good. That on the on the receiving end of it, I'm just getting shit. I'm like, well, you know, and the worst thing is, is like people always say that uh, people always say, oh, you shouldn't you shouldn't be in a position to read that. That's fine saying that because people that say that have not been on the receiving end of abuse constant, mm. like daily, like daily. I'd put a photo up of Jill and I being at a wedding and I'd get abuse about my hair or my teeth or like it's like a Colgate advert because Jill's got nice teeth as well. I'm like, well, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> like I've had enough of this. Like, um, and I'd be lying to say that it's not played a part in like that you had all the mad, like loads of different bits and pieces up about retirement. I'd be lying to say that that kind of stuff is not like is not been included. Yeah, well, it's draining. Um, it drain, drains the life out of you. Oh, it? Mate. oh, it does, mate. It does. But like my body's knackered. I'm doing everything I possibly can to get out in the rugby pitch at the minute to play well. Um, to then receive so much shit on the back of it. I'm like, well, nah, not for me. You know what I mean? So it's it's a tiny little part of it, but um, <clears throat> hopefully when once I retire and my new employer, whoever that may be, um, I can uh, potentially speak speak my mind online without yes. getting a ban. Oggy, do take us through that because that the retirement call seemingly coming out of nowhere, like shocking the rugby world in a way. Run us through exactly what happened and why. I've been thinking it for a while, mate. To be honest, like, so we look at the disappointment of the 17 Lions tour and I'm picking up all the injuries and then kind of starting to get all the hate. It took me a while to get over the disappointment of that tour. So then for the next couple of years, um, ahead of the 21 Lions tour, I was like, right, this is my time. I'm going to go all out to make sure I get on this tour. And I was chuffed to bits like over the moon to be in a position to go on a third tour and I was like right I didn't see myself as a proper lion until I got a test match and if I didn't get a test match to this day I still wouldn't believe my proper t- proper lion so I targeted that from an individual point of view like I'm going to do everything I possibly can to get there and I loved it I absolutely loved it but the only thing when you look back on it and thinking right you've looked at lions tours for years on end we played a lions tour in South Africa, against South Africa, with nobody in the stands. With nobody in the stands. And I was like, well, you know, for me, I dreamt up of being like, doing everything I possibly could to have like an unbelievable time on Lions tours. And it was the same for everybody. Like, you know, some people will never get another Lions um, tour, but I'd been on other, I'd experienced other ones, so we were kind of lucky. Some boys will play on, play on that Lions tour that'll probably never go again. But that's their only memory and experience of a Lions tour is behind closed doors. Since then, I've really, really struggled with my body. 
Like, I've done everything to get there. I've got patella tendonitis in both knees, worse in the right than it is in the left. But I'd struggled from... I remember speaking to boys, and, like, older boys are like, you get to a certain point in your career, and it just hits you. Bang, it just hits you. And I was like, no, nah, it'll, never, it'll never happen to me. Never happen to me. In 2021, after the Six Nations, um, that time came. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, holy shit, what's happened to you? And it was just like game on game. I was just trying to do everything I possibly could to to build up to play. And then went on Lions Tour, had an extended time off, came back, didn't do any pre-season training or anything like that. I was just like, wanted to mentally switch off and recharge. Came back in, done a couple of weeks of training, straight back into playing. And I played a lot of rugby that that season. Um, and then the body just started to break down. And I was doing like I worked well with worked closely with Steve Hall, our physio at the at the club, and he's been absolutely outstanding. Like literally spending hours on end every single day on the physio bed to get right. And I've just got to the point that having a young family, I'm just you know, my, my son, it breaks my heart when my son comes up to me and says, Dad, do you want to go play football in the garden after training? And I'm absolutely knackered. I'm in too much pain that I can't even go go outside. Um and I'm like, no, nah, that's like enough's enough, like family's my priority um and rugby started to become a job like I wasn't enjoying it as much as I used to because of the way my body was feeling and then losing the Scotland captaincy uh I just felt like time had come for a change and whether the change would be not being Scotland captain because it is you know a high pressure environment you, you take a lot on on yourself which I love doing and I thought the change might be not being the Scotland captain but in that autumn test, I felt I was doing the exact same job as I was doing when I was captain. And I was like, the change isn't really here. Um, and I sat down at length with Jill, with my parents, with Rob at the club, uh, with Gregor, um, and just said, I believe now's my time to, to pull away. And ever since making the decision, I've felt like a completely different person. Like feel, feel at ease. I feel like there's a monkey being lifted off my back. And... I'm now in a position that I'm doing everything I can to make sure I'm fit and well to play, but I'm going to have like the most enjoyable time I've ever had on the rugby field because I know that, you know, it could end in a few weeks' time, um, or it could end after the World Cup. So I'm going to do everything I possibly can to, to get to the World Cup. Um, and then yeah, like I'm genuinely excited about life after rugby and and moving back to Scotland and being around all my family. I've been away for, you know, fourteen years now, um, from home. So, um. Yeah, it's time to time to get the English accents knocked out the kids, I reckon. <laughs> He's gutted about that. He doesn't stop. Oh, He's worried right, his kids yeah. have got English accents. And mine have got Glaswegian ones. But you the real reason you want to move closer to me so I can come and drink at your pub in Hoyk. Well, you can do whatever you want, mate. You can do whatever you want. The only thing is is you're gonna to have to run it past my dad first. It is funny though, eh, how how it all comes around, Hoggy. Like I'm on a sort of a similar sort of boat, but you spend your whole like career like striving for something and stressing yourself out but then suddenly you're like you realize again what it's what, what the whole point is and so now you know the end's coming you want to enjoy it as much as possible so yeah, yeah you're, in a way you're sort yeah. of lucky that it doesn't end like that you've got an opportunity yeah. now to fucking enjoy it eh? like it's my 14th season at it you know what i mean like i'm i'm at ease with what i've done and i'm excited about you know for me from a family point of view going back home having a completely different career. Like, I've never, you know, I've been very lucky. I came straight out of school into rugby. Like, I'm going to have to go into the real world, which I'm actually really quite excited about. Um, but, yeah, like, you get, like, you get the freedom to to do what you want type of thing now. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm excited about. But could I have played for a little bit longer? I don't know, potentially, but I'm not giving myself that opportunity. I'm at ease. Like, I wish I had this feeling that I've got now a couple of years ago in terms of like the freedom to play and enjoy it because the last few weeks I've been jumping into work by springing my step going right let's go like I'm, I'm fit and ready to play again whereas for years I've been like no like I'm absolutely knackered and beat I can't be bothered what's on the horizon mate genuine I, at this moment in time like we've got a plan with the agency about what we'd potentially like to do but right now there's nothing set in stone and you know, if I if I decide to do the World Cup prep, then it buys myself a little bit of time. I can get to October time before I have to step into the real world. But as of 
July the 31st. I'm unemployed. So um, if anybody out there listening wants to give a little ginger prickly Scottish kid a, uh, a job, then then I'm all for it. Oh, yeah, and me. I'll come work at Tesco's with you. <laughs> Mate, honestly, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. I'll meet, I'll, meet you, I'll meet you just shy of Edinburgh. <laughs> a final one, Augie. Your nickname, The Magician. But didn't J.K. Rowling actually include you in the podosphere and, and announce you're, in fact, a full-blown wizard? Yeah, she did, yeah. Um, was it me, Kelly Brown, and Jim Hamilton she referred to on it? Oh. She said that I was... Yeah, she said I was like a magician or something. That was years ago. Um and and what uh I think it was one of Jill's mates after I put the tweet out about the announcement of, of retiring, JK repl- JK Rowland replied to that and like one of Jill's mates screenshotted it and wrote as if JK just replied to your husband on <laughs> Yeah, I'm a magician. Yeah, I used to be. I used to be quite good. That was back in the day. Yeah, I'll tell you, Squigs, Nick Grigg wouldn't get in there because he, remember, she came in the change room after and he saw her and he, I went, who's that was? I said, that's the lady that wrote those books, Harry Potter. It was like, fuck, is it Roald Dahl? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's her name, Roald Dahl. Uh, <laughs> Let's finish off with our usual quick fire round, kind of the first thing that comes into your head. Best player you've played with? Ben Russell. Best player you've ever played against? Dan Carter. Actually. Oh, wait. Oh, good, 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 good. Go, go. Dan Carter for being Dan Carter, but one of the toughest opposition players I've ever had to come uh, play against was Julian Savia in his peak. Um, what was he got, like 52 caps and like 49 tries or something. Um, I remember playing against him at Murrayfield and I could still be playing him now, mate, and I wouldn't get anywhere bloody near him. He was, he was tough. Pound for pound, the toughest player I played against. Biggest fight you've witnessed in training? Um, Tom Ryder and um, oh, what was his name again? Offa Fanganuku. Offa Fanganuku. Uh, mate, that was the best. That was a great fight. Yeah. That went on for a good five minutes too long. Yeah, um, it got to the awkward stage, didn't it? <laughs> it got to the, yeah, it got to the awkward stage. I'll tell you who I used to really enjoy. I used to enjoy Fuzzy against uh, Adam Hastings. They were always good. Cause Hester would just get, yeah, because like, Hester would play 10 in the fifth, in the starting 15, and Chris Fazaro would just fly off the tail line outs and hit everybody late. But Adam, like anybody that Fuzzy hit, would just be like, oh, fuck, it's Fuzzy, like let him off. Whereas Adam Hastings would like chase after him and go after him again, which I was like, do you know what? Fair play, Hester, good on you. And he would go for Fuzzy. Um, and they ended up having a little set too now and then. But I mean, that pretty much continued for like the whole season. It was at Test Match Tuesday was the best ever sessions because, like, right, what's Fuzzy and Hastel going to be up to today? But Hastel, they could hide behind a lamp or still went after him. Like, it was it was fair play. <laughs> Player who's rubbed you up the wrong way the most in your career? That prick, Wilson. What, really? Oh, wow. Mate, like, in all, the, in all the time I've played, in all the time I've played, um... I've heard what you said to some people and then I was like, shit, I've got to play against them. When I moved to Exeter and the far, the, the most like gutted I've ever been was drawing Glasgow in the European round, the first season I was there. Yeah, me too. And I run out the back of like a, a forward pod and this clown just came from absolutely nowhere and I just shipped the ball into anybody and he wiped me late as hell. And like would like stick his elbow in my face, like forearm in the face. He's like, that's just the fucking beginning and all that kind of stuff. And then he was like, cha- like I remember like dummying him and then passing to somebody else. Or like the ball was like skipped past me and Wilson was flying out of line to hit me. But like <laughs> skipped past me. He's like, oh, you're fucking lucky there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he, he's he's hellish. You you and Peter Romani are the worst to play against. Like... Just hard buggers that I just I just don't enjoy. Yeah, you're de- you're definitely like, mate. Honestly, twice, two or three times I played against you, I was like, this is hellish. Wasn't bothered about like the final result. I was just like, how much verbal abuse or physical abuse am I going to get off this clown? Yeah, but we love each other, really. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. 
You're saying that, Ryan. I mean, he's literally just said yeah, you're the most yeah. annoying player he's ever played against in his entire 40 season career. Nah, he's ever, winding you ever. up. He's got loads of other people. That, that to be fair, I've not really. <laughs> <laughs> Deadly honest here. Uh, final one, Hoggy. Three people in a car with you for the biggest party of your life. Well, I need somebody for crack. So it'll either be... I'll either take Wilf or Jim Hamilton, one of the two. Can't have them both there because it'll be a pissing contest about who speaks the most. Um, so it'll be Wilf or Jim. Mate, Jim um, fucking can't hack it, mate. He's gluten free. He doesn't eat like he can't touch a fucking potato. He, he like he he doesn't even drink full beers anymore, little half pints, and he smoke bombs like you wouldn't believe. So I'm ahead of him. I'd rather. I'd rather. Oh, wow. It's a lot of abuse. Yeah, is that, is that is that is that is that you you know pleading your case there? Um, yeah. Right, we'll Not take Wells. Pitch. Come on, Wells. We'll take. We'll, I'll take Wells. I'll take. Um, I'll take little Greek, little Greek Laidlaw. Yeah, great things about this man. Yeah, because he because he is a fucking lunatic when he gave him a couple. Um, I'll probably take Big Dave Yours. Oh. Big Dave Yours because he can, he can see the pints away. He puts him in that hump. He, he, he puts him in the he, camel. He hold, he holds a pint pot as if it's a fucking half pint. Like honestly, he's got hands. Never seen anything like it. So I reckon him and Wells could go toe to toe, which would end up Wilson getting absolutely battered because he would never be able to keep up. Oh, how um, and then and then and then little Greek trying to be the little small man syndrome, chasing our tails. Um, yeah, that would be the three. Well, Dave yours, Greg Laidlaw. Sadly, that is actually all the time we've got left for this week. A uh, huge thank you to Ryan and to Max as always. And a huge thanks uh, uh, to Stuart as well. Uh, Oggy, best of luck with the end of the season, hopefully the World Cup, and then everything that comes afterwards. Uh, you've been fantastic, Vaddy, so huge thank you. And we will hear and see you all next week. <laughs>